Hi, welcome to today's session on Site Survey. So what is Site Survey? Site Survey professionally is when we go to site to check majorly two things. One, hygiene check and the other, we take measurements. So what is hygiene check? Hygiene check is basically when we look at the condition of the site. The condition of the site could have probably a paint peel or a wall crack or maybe even the column is cracked or maybe some beams are lower or maybe some columns are jutting out too much. We also check if the windows are in the right place, even if it is not, whether we can use some hacks to correct the positioning, whether there is enough daylight and if you're in a tropical country, whether if there is no scope for an outdoor AC, then is there a scope for AC outdoor unit on the window? So these are the kind of checks that we need to do. And after we do all these kind of checks, we jot them down alongside the plan. What is the plan? The survey plan is when we take measurements at site. Now let's learn how to take measurements. For that, you need four tools. One, a grid book, pencil and eraser, a measuring tape, and a camera. So how do we begin? We take this book and we start from the door. So as you can see, the door is here. I am going to approximately place a line which will indicate a door. I will call it D. And then you have this wall. So I will start from the corner of the door, pull this line till the place where I have an offset. As you can see there is an offset. You bring the column out and draw the column. Then you look at the wall opposite the door and pull another line. I have a door in between, which is an internal door. I leave a gap and then I continue drawing the line till the column. I pull another offset here and make a column. And then after that, I have a window. So I mark the window. I draw a line and I mark the window. I make a double line to indicate window. Then I have a small little wall again. After the window, I draw that line and then I have a slant. So this is where it gets tricky. So I will go back to the door and then draw another line, which is after the door towards the left. All right, now I have these two points and I will just connect them. And voila, there goes my plan. Here it is. So before you take measurements, there are some do's and don'ts regarding how to hold the tape and where to start from. I personally like to start from the door because then it makes it easier for me to end at the door and to hold the tape correctly. If I start from the door and then pull it from the right, then I can read the numbers straight instead of, you know, the other way around. So hold the tape in such a way that you start from the corner, put your finger here, and pull the tape all the way so that you can capture the corner measurements. Also, do not hold the tape tilted because you will then get variations in the measurements. So when you buy a tape, ensure that the tape is a little thick tape, you know, not a very thin one, so that you can take wall measurements and the tape can go automatically on its own. You don't have to hold it from the top, right? So now you need to take the walls measurement. So you put the tape this way, put your fingers on the tape, fold it past here and take your knees, pull it down all the way and you get the measurements right at the bottom without having anyone else to hold the tape. 36 inches. Hundred and five inches. Now that we have all the measurements on our grid book, it's time to transfer it to the drafting board on a neat piece of paper to scale or if you use CAD, you can transfer it to CAD. So these are the measurements that we have taken at site. It's time now to transfer them to a neat sheet of paper. As you know, it's logical that we cannot 
draw the whole room in an A4 size of paper. So what we do is we scale it down. So one feet of scale in real will be represented by half an inch. And this way you would draw all your measurements to scale. So two half inches would make two feet. And this way you would complete the entire layout to scale, write down, label them properly and jot down the scale that you have used neatly. And there you go. You have drafted your first measurement plan. The next session, I will teach you how to make a layout plan. And for that, you need to click on the subscribe button.